Hey, tea cozies. I hope you had happy and safe holidays. Um, so I answered a few of you that I probably would be taking a little while to record this answer video since I'm getting reno some renovations done at the moment. But I didn't want to keep you waiting too long. I have about an hour that I can record right now. So I'm going to try to get some answers in. And I'm also pretty tired myself right now, so maybe my sleepy voice will make you sleepy too. Anyway, let's get started on answering some of your questions. I'm going to put in some timestamps of the questions that were asked. So if you have a particular interest in the answers to a certain question, then you can skip ahead if you'd like, or you can just lie down and listen to the whole thing and help you relax and fall asleep. I will have a frequently asked questions section toward the end of the video. So if I haven't answered your question, it might be in that section. Anyway, let's get started. Logan Johnson asks, what's your favorite dessert for Christmas? And I answered, a lot of my favorite desserts are from around Christmas time. This year I have a particular craving for anything, peppermint or candy cane and chocolate, like peppermint mocha, cookies candies, peppermint bark, body spray, and hand cream. My mom also makes these pretty great mini cheesecakes around the winter time, and I prefer them with blueberry topping. Um, I used to like strawberry cheesecake a lot, but recently I feel like strawberry is a little cliche. So I really enjoy blueberry over strawberry. In past Novembers and Decembers, I used to make butterscotch cinnamon pie inspired by Undertale. I also like gingerbread cookies and I usually microwave them for a few seconds so they're nice and soft. I also like um, Barnes and Noble and Starbucks has these gingerbread cookies around the holidays and they're really soft and they have a lot of molasses and they're covered with a sprinkle of crunchy sugar and they're really good. When I was little, I used to have these powder sugar dusted crescent shaped almond cookies and they give me a sense of togetherness since my mom and older sister used to do a lot of crafting around Christmas time with those cookies, but I can't find them anymore. I'm pretty sure they were Pillsbury. Anyway. This is going to be a theme throughout the video. I don't have just one favorite. I like a variety of things. I, if you choose, if you'd ask me to choose one thing, I probably can't. <laughs> so a lot of the, my, what is your favorite questions will be, I don't have a favorite. I enjoy a lot of things. Uh, 
Anayosora asks, what is your favorite story of all time? That is a very difficult question. <laughs> um, and, but I answered, if we're going with published books, I usually say The Princess Bride. Um, the humor tickles and the characters are so earnest and delightful. I used to read the book about once, uh, once a year. I have three versions of the book. I have the ebook, I have the paperback, and I have the 25th edition illustrated version that I got from Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon. Um, I love the movie too, obviously. <laughs> We also watched the movie when I was up in Portland, um, at like what, what, one of those living room theaters and they served alcohol and the whole theater was like quoting the movie and it was fantastic. Um, but anyway, the book does go more into the characters' relationships. Inigo and Fezzik, their relationship is just the cutest. It's so wholesome, and they're so supportive of each other. And they're just, they help each other through their fears and the darkest moments in their lives. And they try to help each other back on their feet when, um, Vizzini dies. <laughs> and it's really cute. If you ever get the chance to read the book, I highly recommend it. Um, the humor might be a little difficult to get into at first because it's just like, um, if you've ever, ever seen the movie, you'll notice that the grandpa and the grandson have a lot of asides during the movie. Like, wait, 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 is this a kissing scene? Um, and the book is kind of like that. It has parentheticals from the author, and there's like a narrative within a narrative. It's supposed to be the abridged version of the story that uh, William Goldman's father told him when he was young. So he has all these asides about how his father told him the story, and parts that he cut out, like, with a lot of the historical background. Anyway, it's... I think it's really funny. <laughs> um, anyway, Hanayo goes on to ask, have you voice acted in other people's works besides Moonshine Animations? Yes. I have voiced in a lot of things. Um, I have been voice acting since 2007, and one of the most frequently asked questions is, how did you get into voice acting? And I will go into that in more detail in my frequently asked questions section of this video. The third question Hanayo asks is, do you have any special goals or dreams you want to succeed in? Um, oh. I'll go into this answer a little more detail into why I started making an ASMR channel. My, I answered and I am. Part of my reason for making an ASMR channel is because my dreams of being a traditionally published author came to a screeching halt this year. I'm still striving toward that, but I have a lot more control over a YouTube channel than I do in the publishing industry. Um, I'd still love to write characters and worlds that people all over our world would adore. And going a little more into that, um, when I was young, when I was in high school, I used to say all the time, like, I am going to be famous for my writing. And as I got older and got a better sense of the world and how my writing fits into it, I realized that I don't necessarily want the fame. What I do want is that I want people to fall in love with my work. I don't necessarily want to be in the spotlight myself. I don't really want to deal with the scrutiny of 
the press or the paparazzi or anything, but I do want people to find something in the characters and the worlds that I write and fall in love with that. I want them to be transported. I want them to be inspired. I want them to feel hope in a world that feels so stacked against them. Anyway, I'll go into writing more later on. Um, Richard Pacheco Vargas asks, why noble tea? And I put a little answer to this in the description of my channel. My name means noble and I like tea. I probably cannot go a day without a cup of tea. <laughs> Not only because of the caffeine withdrawal and I don't want to deal with the migraine and the headaches and um but I just find it so incredibly comforting to make a hot cup of tea. Like boiling the water in an electric kettle and pouring the steaming water over a tea bag or some tea leaves. And letting it steep and then taking a deep breath of the aroma and savoring it. Um. Another question is, would you like to learn other languages? I studied French in high school. Um, my cousin actually started teaching me French when I was like 12 because he was a few years older than me and he was also taking French in high school. And I was like, this is cool. I like this language and I got a head start because my cousin started teaching me it. So yeah. I, English is my first language. Well, I mean, uh, I can still speak a little bit of like baby Cantonese cause that's what my mom taught me when I was like, you know, a baby, but my parents common language is English. And that is also the language that I speak in every day that I write in and I voice act in. Um, so would I make a video speaking in these other languages? No, because I am not fluent enough to make a video speaking in them. Have I visited other countries? Sadly, no. <laughs> I don't even have a passport. Um, for most of my life, I sadly bragged that I've never been outside of California. I don't think Reno really counts. <laughs> um, Richard also asks, which movie saga is your favorite? And going again with the favorite thing, but also movies, I don't really watch movies that much. I do enjoy watching movies, but I'm not like a huge movie buff, so I can't really say if I have a favorite movie saga. I do, however, really enjoy Hayao Miyazaki's work. Um, a lot of the themes that he uses in his movie, like environmentalism and anti-war and spiritualism. It's stuff that I've adapted in my own work, adopted in my own work. So I would say, um, I like Studio Ghibli movies, but I wouldn't really say that I have a favorite movie saga. Smash Blaster One Up asks, have you ever thought of doing covers of songs such as George Harrison's Dream Away, for example? I do not consider myself a singer. Um, actually, a year ago I was taking a, a musical theater class. And oh boy, I had to get out of my comfort zone so quickly 
in order to, you know, do the singing assessments and sing songs. But this, that class was very dance based and I am not a dancer either. It was one of the most challenging things that I put myself through, um, taking a musical theater class, but I am so glad I did it. But at the same time, it made me realize like I am not a musical theater person. I do not really consider myself a drama kid. <laughs> um, it's fun, but it's not really me. So anyway, um, although I do enjoy singing at karaoke and singing to I, musical theater songs are the ones that I enjoy the best, probably because like I can tell a story in a song, but I, I would, I'm very self-conscious about singing in front of people. I don't know. There's just this kind of vulnerability with it that I'm not comfortable with. Uh, so I probably will not do any singing covers. Elijah Jackson asks, have you ever heard of a show called Code Lyoko? Yes, but I have not watched it go into more about watching TV shows later on in my FAQ section. Horsehead Studios asks, how did you come to meet Moonshine Animations? For those of you who are unaware of what this means, Moonshine Animations is a channel for which I voice the character Lilia Resnia. Um, you might recognize that name and the voice from Resnia Reads. Anyway, uh, four years ago, Moon approached me about voicing in a project of his. And he answers in one of the comments on my 1000 subscribers videos that, uh, <laughs> He was looking for a voice for Tharja from Fire Emblem Awakening. And I was cast as Tharja and probably noir in a fan dub of some of the cutscenes from that game. It's been such a long time. Um, but I mean, I can't even remember what the kind of voice I used was for that, but it was something like this, but a little bit more statistic and twisted. So anyway, Moon was like, I need somebody to voice this chick who uh, kind of hates everything but loves kids. And I was like, cool, <laughs> I will try out for this. And I did, and, you know, there we go. Axis1247 asks, I noticed you said you wanted to be an author. What kind of books were you looking to write? Biography, romance, fantasy, science fiction, etc. And I replied, fantasy, especially high fantasy. I'm most at home creating worlds from the ground up so I can make up my own rules about the why the world is the way it is without doing a lot of real world research and offending anybody. Um, I have tried doing contemporary fantasy too. But it's still not the same, because then I feel like I have to adhere to real world laws, like when it comes to, you know, the cops and aliens and magic. So I'd like, I most like making up my own social systems and how people react with each other with those systems in place. So high fantasy it is for me. Sana or Zana or Sana asks, I would ask, how do you make a calming environment? 
words. And actually, this is something that I've kind of been struggling with myself. Um, I am a highly sensitive person, and that means that I get overwhelmed and overstimulated pretty easily. And I'm also an introvert, so when I come back from work, um, you know, in the before times, um, like, you usually have to deal with a lot of people and I'm overwhelmed with all of the, the talking and the social interaction and I just want quiet. Just want peace and quiet. So, I'm pretty sensitive to sound and I try to pad my room with noise absorbing materials. I've hung up a blanket over my bedroom door, which I keep open at night so my cat can roam freely, otherwise she'll whine at me to open the bedroom door and then I have to wake up and that interrupts my sleep and that's no good. So I also think it helps to have a good set of noise cancelling headphones and play some calming music or background noise, I especially like the sound of rain and crickets. Um, I use earplugs when I sleep, and sometimes a noise machine playing crickets and rain. I use blackout curtains, which also kind of helps dampen some sounds from noisy neighbors. I like gentle lamps with soft light and some aromatherapy. I particularly enjoy the scents of eucalyptus lavender, and chamomile. If that's in the case, if you have to mold your environment to become relaxing for you. Otherwise, I do recommend if there is some beautiful naturally, natural scenery nearby, try to escape there. I love forests and greenery, but Unfortunately for me, I live in a very dry area, and it's just open and sunny and gross. <laughs> but even though my surroundings aren't ideal, it still helps a lot to go on a walk and breathe in some fresh air. Even if it's not the misty forest that makes me makes me feel so alive and at one with the world. Joel Miller asks, Dear Resnia, what is your favorite thing about potato? And as Resnia, I would say how she challenges me to rethink what it means to be a good person. <laughs> um, I'll go in more into resting your questions later. Tenma asks, do you like rats? Yeah, they're pretty cute. Do I like puffy rats? Even better. Do I want 100 rat babies? Um, oh, I missed the Chubby Rats question. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But do I want 100 rat babies? Oh boy. The thing is, I have a cat and she would probably think of them as toys. Moreover, I'm not sure if I can take care of them. Um, what is my smash main? I don't play Smash. Um, I don't like versus games. They stress me out. I don't like competing against my friends. I hate it. <laughs> I just, I get so stressed out. Like, you guys are my friends. We're supposed to be working together, not fighting. So, I much prefer co-op games. Um... On Sundays, I've been playing Stardew Valley with my college roommates, and co-op is fun. I enjoy it because we get to be collaborative, and we get to work together, and I like that. Where 
do I want this channel to be in five years? Um, I would still like it to exist, but there's so much uncertainty with this year and I don't know what the future holds. I have really enjoyed making these videos so far and I really enjoy the comments that my videos are helping them. That's why I made this channel to begin with. Um, I would very much like to continue. It would be neat to try new innovative ideas in the future. But again, like, I don't know how the future is going to change and how I will have to be, um, flexible when it comes to creating content for this channel. I do want to continue. I say that now. But I don't know if I will be allowed to. Uh, do I have plans to do Journey to the West as an ASMR cover? Ooh, uh, I will consider it. But for stories that I'm trying to tackle first, I'm trying to do stories that I'm familiar with. And I have not read Journey to the West yet. Would I like a pet capybara who is chunky? That sounds adorable. Like, I would love that, but, um, I don't know how to take care of them. And like with the 100 rat babies, it's like, you know, I don't want to take the responsibility for something if I know that I can't take care of it right away. So, I'm gonna, like, it would be cute. Stormy Boy asks, what is the best food you've ever had? And that is also a very difficult question, like the favorite questions. I answer, oh man, these best of questions are so hard. Mostly because I enjoy food so much. I'm pescatarian and I have been since 2011. And I love cheese, so usually if it involves either seafood or cheese, it's amazing. So, there we go. <laughs> Sleepy Account asks, oh my cat is sleeping. You might hear her snoring in the background. Sleepy Account asks, what is your favorite type of ASMR you like listening to? I am a whispers voice kind of person. And I also really enjoy crunchy or green sounds. Like pushing a chopstick through salt. But also, since I'm a voice person, that's the primary focus of the content that I create. Capone Ardellian, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, asks, would you rather fight Freddy Krueger or Krampus? And I say, if you're going by horror movie tropes, I would probably survive both. For one, I I don't do drugs. Um, I don't smoke. For one, I'm a voice actor and I need to protect this instrument of mine. I do drink, but you know, I'm like of age, so it's okay. <laughs> but I also don't drink in excess. And I'm also asexual, so any of the, oh, you do drugs, you smoke, you're having sex before marriage doesn't really apply to me. <laughs> you know, those characters usually get killed off first, and it's seen as, like, a punishment because of their deviancy or whatever. Um, so, by horror trope movie standards, I'm usually safe. <laughs> but anyway, I say I would rather fight Krampus because if I were facing off with Freddy Krueger, 
I don't know if I could do that because I need to sleep. Yeah. So I'd probably be really weak against Freddy Krueger. So I'm going to say Krampus. Um, Alexander Ho asks, what's your worst or most memorable mess up for ASMR or voice acting? And I answer, the most memorable mess up is probably ass tarts, because that is on Twitter. And if you know, you know. And if you know, I keep getting notifications about the video that Moon posted. <laughs> so, you know. Um, the, the thing is, um, I was supposed to say Astartes. But I didn't have a pronunciation guide for that, so I was looking at the word and I'm like, okay, how do I to pronounce this? Astartes? 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 <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Um, and what is noble about this tea? And this tea? wants to help people relax and sleep, so I think that's pretty noble. Burning Ice asks, what kind of voice training you've done in the past, if any? And what do you do for warm-ups before recording sessions? So, um, with most things that I do, I am not formally trained. I do not believe that you need to have professional training or education in order to do the things that you're interested in or love. Like when it comes to writing, voice acting, or doing art, I am mostly self-taught and I learn by doing. Um, so yeah, I would suggest not to drop like five hundred, five thousand dollars on a course of things that you could learn in a few months just by doing it yourself. So anyway, I, for when it comes to warm-ups, when it comes to voice acting, anyway, I don't really warm up for ASMR. I probably should. Um, I usually buzz my lips like... <laughs> Um, I hum scales and I make sure that I'm well hydrated before recording. And this is for everybody. If you search five minute vocal warm up, the video by Jacob's Vocal Academy is a pretty good and quick warm up. I was actually introduced to that video last year when I was doing my musical theater class. Um, and I usually followed that video warming up in the car when I was driving on my way to class. So, good stuff. Necro Mancer asks a tech question. What kind of microphone do I use? Um, the ones that I'm using right now is what I also use for my regular voice acting. It's the AKG Perception 420 plugged into a Tascam. 60 something, it's a really long name, DR60 Mark II, something like that. Um, and I have two of these microphones, and I can thank my friend Sony for that. Um, and I have two so I can create a stereo sound, but these microphones normally do not record in stereo. Um, I also have lavalier microphones, the Comica something, something is a really lavalier microphones that I um, plugged into some silicone ears and you'll hear that in the ear cupping video coming up. So I also, I created a sort of tutorial video on how to create your own binaural microphone and that's going up in January. And Necromancer also asks, are you going to do other horror stories and less ear tingling story readings? And I do have more horror stories coming up in January. Don't want to give it away, but um, 
as well as Resnia Reeves, I probably will do um, one of these types of stories once a month until I run out of ones that I actually want to read. So, yes, I will be doing some horror stories. I'm also having going to plan some role plays in the future, so you can look forward to that. Raphael asks, banana bread or garlic bread and ooh, this was a tough one I actually gave this a lot of thought like I was sitting on it for about two hours when I was playing Stardew Valley <laughs> um, and I finally came up with a good answer so if it's good banana bread then it's good no matter the temperature fresh next day at room temperature refrigerated but even the best garlic bread can get soggy or hard if left out too long. And it's only fantastic when it's fresh. So because banana bread can be eaten and can be tasty and moist and delicious no matter the temperature, I would say banana bread. Duke Oddball asks, do you believe in aliens? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the world, the universe is so vast that there can't not be aliens, even if they aren't the kind of intelligent life forms that we think they are in sci-fi. I do believe in aliens. I believe there is life out there, even if it's not the ones that we want it to be. Glitch Galaxy 85 asks, what are your top five weapons you use in battle? Guns, knives, hands, skull, and the enemy's own idiocy. If you're asking for more specific weapons, then I'm not really a weapons kind of gal, so... <laughs> The figure collector asks, My question is, could I get into voice acting? Yes. Anime and otaku Pacific Rim fam, O-O-F, oof, asks, What is your favorite cereal? I haven't eaten actual box cereal in a long time. I normally eat oatmeal with chia seeds for breakfast. I did really enjoy Kashi cereal back in college though, like the puffed greens or something. Those are good. My dream car is electric. I don't really care what brand, I just want one when they're more widely available and more affordable. Because I love the planet and I want to do what's best for it, so, you know. Yay, tree hugger. Crimson Minotaur asks, will you be accepting scripts concerning roleplay? Safer word material, of course. Thanks. If so, what are the rules you'll be setting? Um, and I answer, I would rather write my own scripts, but I am taking suggestions. So on the note of reading the works of living authors, I answered Necromancer. I haven't quite figured out the legalities of narrating works of living authors on my channel yet. So that is why I'm mostly focusing on books that are in the public domain. I would like to monetize this channel eventually, so if I were to narrate the works of a living author, I would need to make sure they're okay with my potentially making money off narrating their words. And then there's the other business side of it. As an actual audiobook narrator, people pay me to read their work, and I'm uncomfortable about narrating someone's work for free and posting it on YouTube. That wouldn't be fair to the people who have paid me for audiobook narration. And then there's 
there's even more legal stuff, like what if the author decides to publish that work and their publisher doesn't want any unofficial audiobooks floating around on the internet and then they'll come after me and make me take it down. So that's a lot of hard work that goes to waste. And it's a sticky area that I don't really want to deal with yet. So I would like to continue narrating work that is in the public domain and writing my own scripts. But I am taking suggestions, so feel free to suggest. And I might get to it eventually. Mac Suniga asks, are you a good mother voice? Well, what do you think? Scribe of Cretacea World of Man and Beast asks, have you had any strange video requests? So far, no, actually. Um, when I started this channel, like, I know that there's this misconception that ASMR is very sexual, and as an asexual person, it makes me uncomfortable to do things as me, recording stuff weird, so, um, I haven't, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, I haven't got any requests that make me uncomfortable, so, no. <laughs> um, any suggestions that I have got, I'm like, okay, that sounds like a cool idea, uh, we'll see if I can try to make something like that happen. I.K. asks, what is the next story, and do you do anything else other than this channel? Um, at the time this question was posted, the next reading was going to be Resnia Reed's Peter Rabbit. Um, the whispered version of that is also coming up, but the next novel, I want to keep a secret. But I will say that there is an asteroid in it, and things of great consequence. Anyway, um, what do I do other than this channel? I am also a writer, a voice actor, a seamstress, an artist, and for my day job, I work as a clerical substitute for the school district. And I want to get a permanent position, but um, the pandemic sucks, and so does nepotism. Mikhail, sorry I can't say your last name, I can't read Russian, asks, Do you like heavy metal? Um, I do enjoy it when it's part of a video game soundtrack, but I wouldn't really consider myself a heavy metal listener. Um, and, uh... Can you try to sing any HM song in ASMR style? I don't consider myself a singer, so no. <laughs> um, I am very afraid of singing something and just irritating you, and that's not what ASMR is supposed to be about. So, you know. Do I have any pets? I have a cat. Her name is Bubbles. You can sometimes hear her purring or drinking water in the background of some videos. Um, and she's behind me right now. She's a little loaf. Actually, she's a chunky loaf. Um, you might hear her snoring, but she's not snoring at the moment. How am I doing during this quarantine? Um, I was doing pretty good at the beginning because I'm an introvert. And then things got really tough these past few months. Um, things are feeling a little more normal now that it's the holiday season. And since I work for the school district, I usually get this time off anyway, so it feels normal. It feels like I don't need to find work. So, yeah, I'm doing better than I was last month. Well, yeah. I'm a little more hopeful with 2021 around the corner. So, I'm getting better. Thanks for asking. Apocalypse Hooper asks, Who exposed you to ASMR and who do you listen to? 
So, I actually did watch Bob Ross growing up on PBS. Um, it was, I don't know, it was so fascinating and lovely. And I just love watching his landscapes come to life. And my older sister was like, why do you watch this? It's so boring. And like, um, I hear other people talk that. Bob Ross was their first experience of ASMR, and it wasn't for me, but I just really watched, like, watching him. It was really satisfying and mesmerizing. So, although I enjoyed his work, I wouldn't consider him my introduction to ASMR. Um, I think the first time I actually heard of it as, like, a thing... <laughs> was in 2014. Um, my younger sister sent me this video, the virtual barber shop, which I'll link to somewhere in here. And I was like, this is really cool. I want to see other kinds of videos there are like this. So I did some searching and I did like some sound assortments, but they weren't specifically ASMR. And I was kind of weirded out by the actual ASM artists at the time. I just thought that somebody quietly speaking to you is a little weird. <laughs> Even though that's exactly what I'm doing right now. But um, uh, the first one, the first person's video, the video so what I could actually stomach watching was Heather. She's just adorable. I love her. Um, she's such a dork and I love it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And my consistent favorites are Gentle Whispering, Whispers Red, and ASMR Zeitgeist. And all three of them have accents that are different from mine. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I, I just really like their stuff. Recently, I've been listening to um, More Ting Ting, Made in France, The Velvet Whisperer, Articulate Design, and Fallen Shadow. So, go ahead and check those guys out too. I'm sure you probably already have. <laughs> the Fearful Symmetry asks, what would be your suggestions for someone looking to get started in voice acting? Just do it. You know that one meme with Shia LaBeouf? Just do it. You need to know how to use your microphone. Figure it out. It's fun. It's a learning process. You might screw up a little bit and you might not get the best quality at first, but... Knowing how to mess up gives you the knowledge that you need to not mess up and how to do it right. Know how to treat your space. If you're doing screaming lines, you don't want to go. Um, make your own videos if no one's going to cast you in theirs. I started on YouTube making my own fan dubs of video games. Just make your own thing that you want to see out in the world. Um, find your strengths. Know what kind of characters you're good at voicing. Know what kind of material you're good at voicing, whether that's more heartfelt emotional work, or if you have really good comedic timing, if you're really good at screaming, if you're really good at those bassy voices, you know, find your strengths. Play to them and make it better. So, just do it. Tad asks, I've noticed in your answers that you're not much of a movie or anime buff, so what type of media do you prefer? Video games. Uh, yes. <laughs> they are a fantastic storytelling medium. They're just amazing. They're interactive. They're visual. 
they have an audio element to it and they give you some agency in the story even if it's a linear story it feels more emotional and impactful when you are the ones deciding whether you want to go out into battle or do a few more side quests for your friends <laughs> um what is my favorite video game? This is a very hard question again with the favorites. and But I say that Chrono Trigger is my favorite because it's the first game that made me want to tell stories. It's still up there with my favorites and it still holds up today. Like the battle system, the random encounter system of earlier Final Fantasy games bothers me so much. The Chrono Trigger isn't like that, and you battle on the same field that you're walking around, and I just love it. It's such a good game. <laughs> the music and the characters and um, the story is like, I want to write something that gives me the feeling that Chrono Trigger did when I first played it. Like, the thing that I don't like about Chrono Trigger is that you can only play it for the first time once. So every time after that, it's like the experience. I love it still. I have a lot of nostalgia and love for that game, but the first time is so special. But anyway, uh, other video games that I really enjoy are Earthbound. Um, Mother 3 is also a really good game. I love the Ace Attorney games. Um, whenever there's a new one out, I'm like, I have to play it. I love the Zelda series. I haven't played the Switch games, though, because I don't have a Switch of my own. Um, Final Fantasy IX is probably my favorite of the Final Fantasy games. Like, it's... I love that it returns to the, um, the European middle medieval fantasy aesthetic. Although I do enjoy the futuristic uh, settings of Midgar and um, Balam Garden. Um, it's just so much fun. Like, it knows it's cartoony and silly. But it still has really good emotional moments. Like, it's not afraid to make fun of itself. And that's something that I really admire and respect in art. Um. I also really enjoy Final Fantasy 6 through 10. They're fantastic games. I loved the Dishonored games. They were so much fun. Like, I, I challenge myself every time to do low chaos, uh, no kills, ghost playthroughs, and I might screw up a lot, but it's fun, and I just like getting the achievements. Horizon Zero Dawn is a god tier game. Gosh, what a beautiful game. Like the mechanics and the plot and it's just so much fun. It's amazing. Um, those are probably my favorites. I mean, I also really enjoyed The Walking Dead season one, but um, it's like after that you can really see what Telltale formula is. So it feels like your your choices in the game aren't as impactful as you want them to be, but oh boy, that game made me cry some ugly tears. Oh, speaking of games that made me cry ugly tears, I love things that make me cry. Fiction, that is. Um, because I love it when something moves me to that emotional level, whether it's like happy tears or um, sad tears, like uh, Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton, or Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. There's that one point when uh, a certain somebody finds out what they did to their adoptive father. And they're like, how could I have done that? And it's such an emotional moving piece, like with the artwork of the character's realization that they killed someone who was trying to protect them. And like the music, it's so good. Oh god, I love those games. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, back to the questions. 
Is there a role you've always wanted to play and or voice act? Um, I feel like when I first started voice acting, there were like I wanted to try everything. And at this point in my voice acting career, I feel like I voiced pretty much all the kinds of characters that I, I've wanted to voice. So right now it just comes to like dream roles. I would love to voice Zelda in an official Zelda game. Like, I don't care what iteration of her. Like, I just think she's a fantastic character. And, like, especially, like, Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess. I haven't played the Switch games. She's just... I don't know. I love how regal she is. And how loving she is. And it's really cool to embody that and portray a character like that with my voice. But the thing is... um. I would probably have to relocate for that and, you know, live in the LA area, which is expensive, and I don't have the money for that, so, you know, <laughs> it's only for more. but anyway. <laughs> um, where do I see this channel going in the future? I do have some more role plays and sound assortments coming up. I say more role plays. I haven't done my first role play yet. Um, those are coming up in the new year. And I hope you guys like them. They were fun. So I hope you guys enjoy them. And uh, yeah. Eliza asks, Sometimes do you keep talking in ASMR voice after you finish a video by accident? And this question kind of implies that I actually talk to people when I'm done recording. <laughs> um, but actually I did notice the other day when I finished recording I was cuddling up with my cat and I was still whispering to her very slowly and gently, so I guess, yes. Do I listen to my own videos to relax or does that not work? Like trying to give yourself a massage. Well, I do believe that you can actually massage yourself, but it's more difficult to try to tickle yourself. Um, anyway, I do actually listen to some of my videos when I'm trying to relax. Um, so, yes, except I don't think I'm really going to listen to the longer novels just because I might get sick of my own voice. Okay, so that's it with the direct questions. Now I'm going to into the frequently asked questions section of this video. Now questions about have I seen this show? My long answer to that is it's very difficult for me to actually sit down and put my focus into watching a show. So I don't really have favorite shows, really. Um, any recent ones. I think the best show that I've ever seen is Breaking Bad. It's just oh, perfect. Masterpiece. Um, Better Call Saul is also a really good show. I haven't watched anime in a really long time. It's, um, it's not my cup of tea anymore. There's, I don't want to shame anybody into thinking, like, I don't like this thing, but you like it. So, I mean, like, if it's your thing, that's cool, but it's just not really there's just so much shouting and exaggeration and it's kind of exhausting. 
So I just like watching more subtle shows like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. I also um, watched The Good Place earlier this year and that was really good. It gave me lots of feels and it made me feel good. Like, what a fun show. <laughs> it was so much fun. Um, but anyway, I... Uh, I like being productive and I derive enjoyment out of creating things. And when I'm actively sitting down to watch something and get to know new characters in their own world, that's taking time away that I can use to create stuff. So, it, it's so passive an activity that I just, I don't really enjoy it. I mean, I like watching YouTube videos when I'm exercising, and but those are mostly like informational stuff science and so but uh, it just takes I have to be in a certain mood for me to want to watch a show like I really want to watch it I have to really want to watch it and I have to be in the mood to watch it and I can't have any projects looming over me making me feel bad like hey why aren't you working on me so yeah um I have been getting a lot of questions about uh Resnia like as if I am Resnia and I'm not Resnia I just voice her um there's questions about like her past or plans for the future, like what she's going to do or stuff like that. And I want to reserve those questions to Moon, so since he's the creator, and I don't want to disrespect his image of her, so um or give false information. Like give a sense that she is different from how Moon imagined her, so I kindly ask you to please redirect those questions to Moon and maybe he'll give you an answer because I don't want to disrespect Resnia. Um, as for the questions about the favorite role I've ever voiced or favorite line that I've ever voiced or favorite video that I've ever voiced in, it, like I said earlier throughout the video, it is very difficult for me to play favorites. I enjoy a lot of what I do. Um, like I enjoy the variety. I like having a range of characters that I can do, like the sweet characters and the princesses and the motherly characters and the badasses. Um, I enjoy doing all of them. Like. I put different facets of myself in these characters, and I hope it shows that makes it more real. But, um, I will say that although I don't have one favorite character or one favorite video that I have, I really enjoy doing the videos that are either really deep and heartfelt and make you feel something that they might be a little slower, but they're just so earnest, and I really, I really like that when I'm, you know, I can bring a character and all their deep, complicated feelings to life through my voice. I enjoy doing those kinds of videos, and on the opposite side, ironically, since I said that anime has a little too much screaming for my liking, um, I like doing high-energy videos, um, on my own channel, I have a fandom of Undyne from Undertale, trying to make friends with her, making pasta with some cooking lessons, and that was just so much fun to do. I blew out my voice, and you can probably hear it by the end of that video, but I had so much fun doing it because it was just so high energy and I could really have fun with it. And there's also from Dual Destinies, Ace Attorney, um, Robin Newman. That was such a fun video to do because Robin is going around as a boy, 
because her parents wanted a boy. But Robin desperately wants to show herself as the girl that she is. And to do that flip from a really brash, boyish, aggressive voice to like high and perky and really girly, that was so much fun. <laughs> Ace Attorney has such fun characters. Um, but like I said earlier, like a dream role that I have is Zelda, Princess Zelda, or you know, Zelda, whatever, in whatever iteration she is in whatever game. I just, she's such a cool character, and I love that she has so many iterations of her. So, yeah. What kind of books? do I like? I'm pretty sure that um, my channel is going to give off the impression of a certain kind of books that I do like. To be honest, I didn't like the Nutcracker that much. <laughs> like, I was reading through it, and as you can probably tell from my bloopers video, it was just, this child marries a boy who is at least 15 years old, and her parents are okay with that, and she's like seven years old. This is not okay. <laughs> but that's not answering the question. Anyway, what kind of books do I like? To read? To write? Um, I considered myself a young adult author for a long time. So I've been mostly reading those books because when you're an author, you kind of need to know what's coming out and what other people are writing and how they're writing it and how they're editing it. Um, so although I do write young adult fantasy, I actually enjoy contemporary books more. And... Uh, <sighs> I feel like I can follow the character's thought process more. And a big pet peeve I have in at least young adult books from the early 2000s is that romance takes over the plot. And I don't like that because they set up these this fun concept of like adventure and danger and friendship. And as an asexual person, when love and kissing and making out and having sex takes over the plot, I'm like, okay, hold on, you're supposed to be saving the world. But no, you guys are making out in this tent. So for that reason, I have to say that young adult fantasy is not one of my favorite books to read. Um, even though The Princess Bride is commonly shelved in the young adult fantasy section. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, there were, I, I've been in a slump this year because of, you know, the whole situation of the world. Um, so I haven't read a lot of new books this year. If you want some of my top three recommendations, I would say The Seven and a Half Lives of Evelyn Hardcastle. And this is a book that is like Groundhog Day meets Clue. The, the narrator wakes up in a body and he doesn't know anything that's going on. All he knows is that he has to find someone named Anna. And he's trying to solve the murder of Evelyn Hardcastle. But he keeps waking up in different bodies, trying to gather the information and solve the mystery. So it's so much fun such a fun concept. Um, there's also, ironically, the name, they had nothing to do with each other, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And this is about, like, a Hollywood starlet making her way to fame and using men on her way to get up there. And the characters just felt so authentic and real, and it was amazing. I was so enthralled with this story because, like, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know how she used these men to get forward in her dreams and her career. Um, 
So that's another one. Another one that made me ugly cry is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, who writes pretty amazing books. Um, and I would call, consider this like a young adult version of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It uses a very similar concept of erasing certain memories to make you cope better and be happier. Um, and like in the movie, the main, I don't want to spoil it, but like the main character has had the procedure done when he wants it to be done again, but he doesn't know this. So it's a really good book. Also, I love reading like young adult contemporary LGBT books. Um, as a non-straight person myself, I just, I, um, those non-straight stories really resonate with me, and when it comes to, like, other marginalizations that aren't mine, I just really like getting into that mindset of what it's like to explore this from somebody, somebody else's struggles. I also, you know, I liked diverse books, similar things, different marginalizations, and seeing what other cultures are like and what kinds of things, what kinds of struggles that they go through that I don't, and being in their feet, in their shoes, and understanding what it's like to go through that. So, yeah. How did I get into writing? So as I said earlier, um, the video game that got me into telling stories was Chrono Trigger, and that kind of sparked my love for creating fantasy worlds. I started writing this really epic fantasy when I was 10 years old, and I never finished it because it was far too ambitious for me, and I told myself, I am not going to write another version of the story unless I finish this one. And the thing is, I never finished that one, but I did go on to write other fantasy stories. And the thing is, growing up, I wasn't a strong reader. Um, you know, when you're in school and they force you to read, that takes out a lot of joy from it. So, because I wasn't a strong reader, I didn't consider myself a strong writer. I considered myself a storyteller. But when I got into high school, and uh, we got, there was a literary club there, and I made some really great friends there. And that's when I started, to, decided to work on my craftsmanship of writing itself like plot structure and, you know, scene work and stuff like that. So again, like with voice acting, I kind of just got into it by doing it. If you want to do something, just do it. Don't hold yourself back because of your means. Like you can voice act with your phone if you don't want to, you know, dish out money for an expensive mic for something you're not sure you want to do. Just do work with what you have and make it happen. On that note, how did I get into voice acting? As I said earlier sometime in this video, boy, we're getting long. Um, I started voice acting in 2007. I started by making my own videos. Um, it was, my very first video was, a Final Fantasy IX ending fan dub, and so I got my friends, and we kind of gathered around my, my laptop, doing these, like, sounds like, uh, and, uh, and whatever reaction noises for the ending of Final Fantasy IX. And that's how I started. Started, really liked it, and I never stopped. The thing is, um, like, 
I've always liked bringing characters to life with my voice. And I did, I started acting for stage in high school. I was in some school plays and I took drama classes. And even though I did get the starring role in my senior year, uh, <laughs> brag, um, I still felt most at home bringing, like, characters to life through my voice. And I don't really have a lot of strong physicality when I'm on stage. So, like, when I'm reading stuff for class, like, we read The Importance of Being Earnest, and it was so much fun. And I was, I was playing earnest, and it was just so delightful. And my teacher was eventually like, okay, you need to sit down and let somebody else do this. But I'm like, I'm having so much fun. And my classmates were enjoying, enjoying my performance too. So, um, yeah, how I got into voice acting was like, that was it. It was like, Final Fantasy IX does not have voice acting and I have a laptop now and I can put this video together and the voices to it because they didn't have voice acting in Final Fantasy games before 10. So that was, that was cool. That was how I got into it. <laughs> I answered the question about how I got into ASMR earlier in the video. Uh, it was when my sister introduced me to the virtual barber shop. And I wanted to see, like, what other kinds of videos are there like this on the internet? Um, so I stumbled across a few videos. Heather Feather was my first dedicated ASM artist. Um, and since then I've been enjoying it and I use it frequently almost every night to help me relax and fall asleep. Um, I've actually been wanting to make my own ASMR channel for a while. Um, I had this idea in the beginning that I wanted to do a role play of cutting open your skull and digging into your brains. And even though I haven't even planned that video, I still want to do it eventually. I just have to make sure how to get the sounds that I want. I do enjoy darker things, like, I'm a bit sadistic and dark when it comes to creating things, like the stories that I write, the characters that I create, the characters that I voice, I guess, but, like, I did want to start off doing more wholesome, tender, loving, calming, relaxing stuff for this channel, but I do want to get into more horror stuff too. Don't want to spoil anything for what's coming up in January. Um, now why I started, although I wanted to do that brain digging video for a while, uh, it wasn't until October of 2020 that I decided that I want to start my own ASMR channel. What I have, what my specialty, I guess, is my voice acting, because I've been doing it for God knows how long, 13 years. <sighs> so I decided that, you know, I can use my voice because gentle talking and whispering is one of my biggest triggers so I can use that and help other people relax and since I've been working on audiobooks for a while I can read some stories that are in the public domain because I have gotten in trouble in the past for recording some stuff from The Princess Bride and getting a note that I needed to take it down, so I didn't want to deal with that. I just wanted to do the, um, uh, you know, public domain stuff. 
few months ago, uh, my dreams of becoming a traditionally published author came to a screeching halt. And I needed something that I could have control over, something that I could still do creatively, but like something that I wouldn't have to deal with everything that's so out of my hands in the publishing industry. So I decided maybe now's the time to start an ASMR channel. And I really wanted to create what I needed, like a warm voice, someone nurturing who could reassure me that everything's going to be okay, that even though we're struggling right now, there's still tomorrow and that there are people in the world who care for you even if they've never even met you. There are people who want you to thrive and make your own dreams come true. So I needed to become the person that I needed to see in the world even if I'm mostly putting that on as a face for this channel when I'm recording stuff. If I just have some more faith in humanity, then why, why not share that with somebody else? ASMR has helped me so much when it comes to relaxing and falling asleep. So I do want to give back to the community, but again, in some selfish reasons, this is something that I have some control over, something that allows me to be creative without stressing over writing deadlines or will my editor like this revision and will this book be the one that launches my traditionally published writing career. So with just a few microphones and my computer and my own imagination, I can keep doing something that helps me feel alive and can help other people to relax and be reminded that they are valued and loved, and that they have a place in the world. So, I think that's probably the answer to the biggest question. And I think I've answered all of the questions that you guys wanted to know. In this video is or this recording anyway, is getting pretty long, so I think we should wrap this up a bit. Thanks so much for listening, if you're still awake at this point. I hope you have a good night. And thank you so much for your support. sleep. Rest well. You are valued.